All right, I'm here to tell you guys about uh, the Juke Glide and how I work it when I'm on the water, a few different things, the equipment I use. We're just gonna do a little demonstration. You can see what my hands are doing with the rod and the reel as I'm making the cast and, um, and using it. So first of all, I have this Tatula 150. You could use a Tatula 200. They're about the same. They just have this full um, uh, size. It's not the same size, so. And this right here is the Hidden Concept Daiwa Fluorocarbon. Um, I've been using Copoly and Mono, Braid to Fluoro Leader. It all kind of depends on the situation, but I've found that I, I prefer the straight fluoro for uh, bass fishing with this glide. For stripers and stuff, I always throw the braid, but, and I really like this. This is uh, the 22 pound. So fluorocarbon, eye rod, swim bait, sniper, the rod that I designed for, uh, for toxic baits and everything else is seven foot six. Um, moderate fast action rated from two to six uh and it's you know it's short so you can make underhand pitches and stuff but any rod in this range will be fine um the bait has one knot treble hooks you could downsize the size one for a slower float um it comes with two tails uh the urethane is the one you're going to want to use for the wide glide it comes with soft plastic but that's for faster turning um i'm usually using this uh urethane tail that it comes with so you can trim the fins how you want it. I kind of leave them moderately long um, so that they have room to, to flare on the paws. And when the bait sinks, they kind of like wiggle. So leaving a little bit there and then just like thinning it out a little bit might work uh, to give it some more action like frog legs. Um, I mean, it's up to you, but I'm just telling you guys how I fish it. So anyways, when I'm out there, you can make long casts, short casts. I mean, for glide baits, if I can, I try to stay away from the cover as much as I can so that, especially in clear water, the fish, if they do follow it, they have time to commit before they get to the boat. Um, they're eating right there in the toolies while I'm making this video. But uh, so when I'm out mostly with the glide, I'm picking my targets, I'm fishing cover, and I'm making accurate presentations to them, whether it be toolies or um, like a rock, if I'm on a rock wall, I'm going to target the channel of weeds between the rocks or maybe the outside weed edge. So I always think that I'm target casting. Very rarely do we just fan cast out here. Um, so, so when you're making the cast with this, um, there's a couple ways to work it. It's not a straight retrieve glide. It will work. It just turns kind of fast. It's made to kind of use the handle for direction changes and a little bit of rod. You wanna keep the line kind of tight. So I'm gonna make some casts and we're gonna film the, the bait in the water and my hands on the rod so you can kind of see what I'm doing while I'm talking it through the cast. So. Probably film the hands right now. So once I get it out there, I'm trying to hold my line pretty tight. I use a seven to one and it's just kind of these quick handle turns and I want the bait to work erratically out there. You can overwork the bait if you pull it and it'll, it'll do weird stuff like most glide baits. Um, so sometimes, sometimes some glides require a little bit of slack in the line, but if you leave too much slack in the line on this, like say I pop it and give it too much, it'll spin all the way around. And sometimes it'll hang on the treble like it did this time. That's not a design flaw, I just, I wanted this bait to cut very hard and have a lot of movement in a short area. So it doesn't come to you. It goes wide a lot and then covers very little ground. Um, I don't know, towards you. Like it doesn't come in much. So almost like walking it in place. So you can also, I kind of naturally use like a little rod pump when I'm doing it. And you can see it's just kind of like a cadence. Um, you don't have to have the cadence. A lot of times I'll do a twitch and just let it hover like this. It's just hovering, kind of the fins are working. And then I'll give it a, a small pump, another couple real slow twitches and just let it kind of hover through the water. It stays very stable. And then if you have to pop it quick, you could get a reaction strike. But I tend to work this style glide bait fast naturally. And, um, so I'll be chop, 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 and then I'll let it glide out. Or you could actually reel fast like this, and then you let it, and, and pause. So I guess 
It doesn't <laughs> glide real wide on a slow, steady retrieve. You, it, you got to get some speed to it. Then it has kind of a tight S, and then you can let it glide out with a tiny bit of slack, real pumps, a little bit of rod action, and you can get it really whipping back and forth, tight or long. You just have to work with it and, and, and have a feel. You don't have to see the bait. Um, since your line and your rod are kind of staying loaded, I think that since it requires to do that, it's very easy to track your bait. You feel the bait turning, you feel the resistance. I don't feel like I have to watch the bait to actually work it. So sometimes I'll be like a long chop, but if I hit a long chop, I'm probably gonna do a little bit of a rod pull with it so that I pull that line. If you use an eight to one reel, you might not have to do that. Uh, if you guys are familiar with canines and TKs from DRT, it's kind of similar to that because it has that real wide turn. So if you give it too much slack, it'll turn around and catch on the front treble. But for the most part, I'm just taking this bait on my on my, uh, on my my rod and I'm underhand pitching, roll casting, or even if I'm making a long presentation out there where they're feeding right now, it, it's, it still will give you that feedback because it has a nice wide profile. Even with this fluorocarbon, you could feel it pulling, pull, pull. I could feel when it's at the apex of the turn and then it releases into the glide. And that's how I know to make sure I don't give it too much slack and then pull it to the next apex of the turn. Um, so the burn works great. It, it's, it's, a, it's a cool bait with a fast S, um, but usually when people are using a glide, they want it to, to glide out wide and, and cut back and forth. So that's what this bait was designed to do. It has the profile of a bluegill, but it also is a shad color. It's a nice deep body. I'm gonna paint some rainbow trout ones. I know it's not the perfect uh, profile, but it is a stubby little dude with a large footprint. And I believe it'll get bites in every body of water. I guess we'll just have to see. But um, so hopefully walking you through that might give you some insight on how to properly work the, gl uh, the glide getting to see my hands on the rod and working it a little bit um the fluorocarbon helps i feel like this hidden concept has a little bit of stretch i don't really know if you want to go sunline um you're going to want to go assassin i believe i don't think it's shooter yeah you want to use assassin it has a little bit of stretch to it um but i'm sure everybody has their choice of fluorocarbon p, uh, p line has fluorocarbon everybody does this is what I'm using now, and I'm happy, the Daiwa Hidden concept, uh, and I think it allows this glide to perform its best. So hopefully that helps out. Rambling, no reason to cut, except for tiny stuff. <laughs>